Once a municipality determines that a Filtera box is appropriate for its stormwater treatment needs, it must assess the costs of purchasing, installing, and maintaining the unit. Filtera recommends contacting their representatives to obtain a price quote because costs vary depending on the design of the unit itself, the complexity of the site, and plans for installation and maintenance. Before an organization spends time analyzing all those details though, it will likely wish to determine whether it can afford to even consider a Filtera. The three Filteras installed in Parsippany provide a good case study for understanding the general costs of a unit. The first cost to consider is that of the Filtera itself. Dollars and cents are the key to uh, determining whether um, a particular device or project for that matter is um, acceptable for um, the municipality or county. Um, mm -hmm. And Filteras do range in size. Um, and thus price um, somewhere from about $9,000 um, to twenty one five dollars um, for the largest structures. A $9,000 Filtera accommodates a small drainage area of about 0.13 acres of impervious cover. The cost of producing the unit includes creating the underground cement box, supplying the engineered media, soil, mulch, and vegetation that will be added to the box, and delivering all these components. As explained in the installation video, filteras must tie into pre-existing stormwater pipes, so the cost will also include manufacturing the connections between filteras internal structure and the adjacent stormwater network. The number of devices recommended depends on the size of the drainage area. As described in the site selection video, larger drainage areas require multiple filteras or units with two plants, which will increase the price of the overall effort. Aside from expenses to purchase the unit itself, municipalities have significant control over the total cost of a filtera. In the most economical scenario, the town may have an engineer on staff who is qualified to research the features of a site and draw up installation plans. Installation can commonly be completed by a Township Department of Public Works, or DPW. can easily be installed, again, with your DPW department, um, whose salaries are typically already incorporated into the uh, Township's funds, so you don't have that additional contract um, with a contractor if a DPW or county roads department installs the device. It's more cost effective if mm -hmm. um, an in-house entity um, feels they're capable of, of installing a device. To install a Filtera on its own, a local DPW will need basic tools, including a backhoe, and may need to rent a larger machine to offload and set the device depending upon the weight constraints of the machine and the weight of the Filtera. It is estimated that a machine operator, two laborers, and a dump truck can install the device in a few days. There is no additional labor cost when a town DPW completes the installation, making the entire process very cost efficient. A municipality may decide to use its own DPW for installation but hire an engineer to plan the project itself. The consulting engineer will prepare the design plans and review the shop drawings provided by Filtera to ensure correct sizing and proper connections. The DPW installation crew will then coordinate the installation and maintenance directly with the manufacturer. In Parsippany, Princeton Hydro served as the engineers and went to bid for an outside contractor to install a Filtera. For the three devices that we installed um, at the Persephone site, um, we went out to bid, um, had two contractors bid and actually varied in price a good bit um, from $65,000 to $129,000 for all three devices. We chose to go with the lowest bid, and costs do vary 
um, the economy varies and prices can vary depending on situation where our contractors are located. Um, how many bids you receive is, is also another um, aspect that can play into things. If you mm -hmm. receive 10 bids, obviously your prices are going to be um, a little bit more um, within a, in the range. The $65,000 included the cost of three 6x4 Filterra units, delivery, installation, and activation, and one year of maintenance. To function as an effective best management practice, it is crucial to properly maintain the Filterra, as described in the maintenance video. Fortunately, maintenance can easily be inexpensive. Filterra provides one year of complimentary maintenance. Beyond that year, Filterra quotes a maintenance rate of $325 to $800 per year per plant. Here again though, the local Department of Public Works can step in. If the DPW does it, um, and they are more than capable of doing um, the simple maintenance that um, is going to be described later, it's going to be cheaper. They typically have access to the simple maintenance materials, shovels, rakes, small pruning equipment, can put mulch in the back of a pickup truck and, and take it to a facility. And again, you don't have the additional hourly rates um, for those employees because they're typically already uh, incorporated into um, an entity's annual budget. Given the variety of options for maintenance and installation, Filterra units are an extremely economical choice for towns looking to improve water quality. In some cases, they may even be an unexpected source of revenue. For municipalities operating under strict financial constraints, however, a Filterra can still be a viable option through grant funding. The Whippany River Watershed Action Committee WRWAC, funded the Parsippany Filterras through a grant from the New England Interstate Water Pollution Control Commission. Since WRWAC has received grants to support many of its innovative watershed programs, it can offer some guidance to others navigating the application process. Well, you have to read the request for proposals. Um, you have to have, I mean, you could apply for a thousand grants uh, willy-nilly and, and you might not get any of them, but organizations uh, generally have, uh, in their request for proposals, uh, give you a very clear and concise idea of what it is that you're looking for. So it would make no sense to apply for a project to one organization that isn't looking for that type of project. So the first thing is to make sure that the, the project that you have fits the parameters of what the organization you're applying to uh, looks for. You have to have something that's going to work and you have something that's going to be able to show a, a demonstrable uh, deliverable, as they call it, that you're actually going to, whoever gives you the grant is going to get something for their money. When a project is completed, an organization should certainly celebrate its accomplishments, but be sure to finalize any remaining details, such as public education or checking in with the grant committee. There's another thing also that's important uh, in terms of getting future grants. You have to finish the job. People who give out grants have expressed to me on many occasions their frustrations with organizations that they've given grants to and then they don't finish them. And you're not going to get another grant if you haven't finished the one that they gave you. So you have to safeguard your reputation by being the type of organization when you get a project and you get a grant that you finish it. Financial consequences of poor water quality often far outstrip the cost of implementing best management practices to address stormwater concerns. Downstream sediment accumulation can necessitate dredging or prompt eutrophication, and pollutants can render lakes unsafe for human use. This can be particularly devastating for towns that rely on aquatic recreation and fishing opportunities to attract visitors. Clean water is essential to life, and best management practices like Filterra perform the invaluable service of affordably maintaining that resource.